awake ones where we're going to be catching up with our roving reporter in Santa Fe, the wonderful Michelle Toon. My name is Lorraine Flaherty. I'm Alexandra Winman. I'm Sally Poinsett Nash. And I'm Michelle Toon, the roving reporter. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so it's been a while. So obviously we've been sharing some of our adventures, but we're dying to hear about some of the stuff that's been going on with you. And uh, it's been five months. Five months. No way. No, I can't believe that. That is insane. That's insane. Oh. So, share what are some of the exciting things that have been happening. Oh, well, let's see. Um, I turned 50 since I saw the three of you. Um, and on my 50th birthday, spent some time in just some magical places in New Mexico. Um, went to the Hot Springs, out at Hemis Springs, and the, the couple that runs that place, they are, I mean, they are truly doing what they were meant to do. And um, got ready to leave from there. You know, all the springs have different minerals in them and got ready to leave from there. And I look over, she's got like a small gift shop there. I look over and I'm like, are, are those pendulums? And she goes, Oh yeah. And she goes, on me, she goes on to tell me a story about how more than once she's seen those pendulums like literally leap off into someone's hand. So um, it's pretty crazy, pretty crazy stuff. So, and then um, wound up going to a, a, a carved cave. It's carved out of sandstone. The man who carved them, I'm probably butchering his name, but it's Ra Paulette. He was a Vietnam veteran and um, came home and tried to, you know, go back to a, a normal, if you will, life and really had a hard time doing that and uh, wound up carving caves in the landscape of New Mexico. And the first one he ever did, uh, it was on private land and the government told him either you can fill it or we're going to demolish it, one or the other. And so I think that's kind of when he realized, um, you know, he has to do these because they're his heart's work, not because they're necessarily going to be seen. So there's 13 or 14 around New Mexico, and there's one at a place called um, Origin, uh, where you can pay to go in the cave, and the woman that owns it, that owns the property, um, plays singing bowls while you're in the cave. It's Unbelievable. It's just unbelievable, especially when you know that this man um, carries a wheelbarrow and 75 pounds worth of digging uh, tools and uh, carries all the sandstone out in that. So it's truly a labor of love, truly a labor of love. So, um, you know, it's just, so that was big. That was a big I think moment. To book an away ones trip. Then yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's all absolutely, like absolutely. Yeah, that that can, so apparently the others are on private land and you're not allowed to view them or if you try to, you take your life in your own hands to do it. So um, this particular <laughs> one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, who knows? Maybe we should go at night. <laughs> 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 I'm, sure, I'm sure they'd see the flashlight or the torches. With the tire um, puncture repair kit. Oh my yes. god. <laughs> we just have like seven spare tires with us next time we go anywhere. The four of us together, I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, that night. <laughs> that that will live in it for me. <laughs> Interesting thing happened. How about you recently? Because you've moved house. I did. I and did. And you've had your own uh, your own experience of because I just want to remind our viewers that when we were in Joshua Tree, Michelle was comatose throughout the whole thing, so she didn't actually get to partake in the uh, energy clearing work that we do. Right. So there's, there is a video on the uh, channel. It's it's a haunted the haunted, haunted cabin. cabin. <laughs> um, so that's what we're talking about right now. Yeah, go watch it, especially if you have insomnia. It'll put you right to sleep. <laughs> If you like horror films. <laughs> right. So, um, I, yeah, I recently moved, um, which is such a good thing. I'm going to have to do a video just on the landscape around this house alone. Um, but there was, um, 
little bit of an odd feeling, like maybe I wasn't completely alone here. And uh, typically I sage wherever I live. You know, we, we've also talked about that, about spiritual practices. Um, and I just happened to be out of sage during the move. So uh, I pulled out Rose, which you may or may not know is uh, um, my own trusty pendulum and uh, walked through the house with Rose and how is this space? Is this space clear? Is there anything here that shouldn't be here? Um, and she was, you know, everything's clear. We're all good. We got to the kitchen and she went, mm. <laughs> no, this is not good. So like, okay, there sure is power in numbers, but I'm here by myself. So I said, uh, do I have the power to clear this? And she was like, yeah, but like emphatic. Yeah. Like get on it. <laughs> We cleared the kitchen, Rose and I did, and uh, walked through the rest of the house, went to one other area that's sort of like a, it's kind of like an outside shed, I guess. I mean, it has a covering, but you know, it's dirt floor. And uh, Rose didn't like that area either. So um, we cleared that as well. And uh, I mean, I walked back in the house and went, wow, I, I feel better. The energy's better. I, this is great. Went to bed you know, several hours later, woke up at probably 3 a.m., which if you know me, that's actually not that unusual for me to wake up and get up that early. But I woke up and was looking out the window and I saw a star and then the star went, I was like, okay, that's not what stars do. So got up, grabbed my glasses, went outside and discovered that there were orbs in a triangle formation over the house and it was it was just magical it was just such a magical experience so of course the first thing i did was whatsapp the three of you and say <laughs> what does this mean i just love i can't get over the timing of this too like i was in coming back from marrakesh in transit and hadn't been able to get wi-fi anywhere to connect with you guys and just happened to be in Casablanca Airport. I had like five minutes or something before I had to board my flight. And I had Wi-Fi and your message came through and it was just a mad. And oh, I forgot to tell you too, Michelle. After we had our conversation, which we'll talk about, I had three major signs for you. And because um, for our viewers, so we were having a WhatsApp conversation. <laughs> and I, by the way, talking to you you have a halo of light all the way around you and it is the no most kidding. beautiful colors it's amazing but our viewers can probably see you i can see like a lot of purpley you can cry on film <laughs> beautiful <laughs> but yeah the the because michelle kind of asked if, if any of us were picking up on anything and i straight away got Pleiadian energy and it was there were three names I think it was three names of three stars, wasn't it? It was Alcyone, Atlas, and um, Merope. Right. And when I got off the phone um, to you and went to board my plane, this truck went by and it said, Atlas Service. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I saw was an advert for something that said, believe in you. And then I was about to board the plane and there was a thing that said, um, Titan, it was Titan something, Titan Transit. I was like, oh my God, I, I think I took a photo of the Atlas and I'll send it to you. It was hilarious. I was like, I've got to tell her about this. So. Wow. <laughs> Just, wow. Those confirmations are cool. Yeah. It's just nuts. It's like, so for you, in terms of your spiritual experience up to now, is this kind of the most tangible evidence that you've had? Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Um, I, I feel like my whole life, um, I've been able to walk into a room and go, hmm, I don't know what's wrong, but something is, you know, sort of had always had that sense. Um, but, you know, I, it's probably not something that I truly started exploring until the last year, maybe two. Um, and so, yeah, especially after being with you guys, learning how to use a pendulum, you know, that kind of <laughs> being exposed to crazy stuff. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> but I think for me, especially walking outside, seeing the orbs, 
um, you know, even being in the cave and just uh, having that 20 minute meditation while the owner played um, the singing bowls, you know, you, you start to um, connect, right? You start to connect. And so I think for me, my willingness to do that um, and then to, you know, know that, that between the confirmation of, from Rose, um, that I had the power to do that clearing. Um, I don't think it's that I don't have any kind of ability. I just think that I haven't tapped into what I actually know how to do yet. hundred percent. Um, You've been waiting for your love. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I've been at work probably. <laughs> Uh, when we were in LA and we got back from our road trip and we got that message about the power of four. Do you remember that? I do. It's been the power of about, been the power of three point seven five up till now. <laughs> yeah. You had the ruby slippers all along. That was the yeah. message. They yeah. were there. It's just you know, see them. Yeah. And I think that's the same for most people out there. Yeah. I think so too. That's the ability. It's just when the, the time is right, when the, everything comes into alignment and then you're ready to, to step up to that next bit. Yeah. Also, it can't all just come in at once. No. I mean, you lose your mind. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ex no, I agree. I agree. I think it comes when you're absolutely ready for it. So, yeah. And the, and the, you know, you and I have talked and it's, you know, it can be a bit much. Um, and it, it takes a while for that to, for you to process kind of new experiences, right. a bit more gets drip fed. Yeah. Right. But especially when you are um, in, the, in the physical sense, you are living your life every day, like that continues on, but all of a sudden you have this different perspective. Um, and so that can be a little daunting too, you know, just going out into the world the way you typically do, doing the activities that you typically do, and then all of a sudden going, why have I seen this woman three times in the grocery store? <laughs> you know, I mean, even just those kind of things or just, you know, being in the right place at the right time and being aware of that and being open to receive whatever that message might be. I, I think those kinds of things are huge. And I think they've always been there. It's just, you know, when the blinders come off, whether or not you're willing to receive it. Um, but the, the message that you channeled in the airport I mean, I read your words and burst into tears and then promptly printed them off and hung them in the bathroom. Oh, honey. Yeah, because I'm reading this every morning, you know? I mean, it's something that I meditate on, so it was really powerful. It was, really like, it was like they were just waiting for you to acknowledge. And as soon as there was an opening, it was like, <laughs> Yeah. And that's that. So, so for you, how are you going to explore this gift now are you just going to wait and see what unfolds is there more that you want to know about certain topics what's your next kind of um that's a great question um i think in the morning when i'm when i've been meditating what what the visual that i keep getting is this faucet that it's you know it it's a little tight. You're trying to open it, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey. You know, you're trying to open it, trying to figure it out. Um, I've had that. Um, interestingly enough, uh, I think uh, I, I think messages might be coming um, in your in your channeling. You said um, the words were, "If if this is something you desire, will come to you in your dream." I had uh, just a like literally a 15 second dream last night that I can't even describe, but it was, it was literally like a circle divided into four parts and I saw hands and then I saw quick faces, super quick faces. And I woke up, I haven't slept since, since this, I've slept for like a couple hours at a time. I'm in bed, but I'm not <laughs> So I think it's because I'm laying there like a kid on Christmas Eve going, <laughs> you me to the what happened? So um, I think for me, just being willing to be open and receptive. And I think like a lot of people out there, 
I think with regard to any sort of spiritual gift, I had imposter syndrome. I just assumed that uh, if I start talking about this, you know, people are gonna be like, oh yeah, sure. You know, I, I, I think that where I am right now is I don't care. I don't care what anybody says or thinks because I really do think that this is something that I should explore. Yeah, and I think, you know, like, when you open up to it and it feels, and it feels right, it feels natural and it feels easy and it feels like a truth. Right. right. I think if you keep following your heart and you keep following what makes you feel good, I always think, because I used to struggle with what people would think as well. And then I sort of realized it would create a constriction within me. Right. And then I just couldn't fight it anymore. I was like, I'm sorry, but this makes me feel too happy. It's so, I would rather feel this happiness and people think I'm weird than, right. you know, than ignore that part of me or hide that part of me any longer and, and fit in with what other people think I should be. And I think that that's it's such an important message, what you were saying to everybody, for all our viewers and everyone to know that, we're all at different places on our path, but every single one of us, like Laurie said, we all have these gifts. We all have them in a unique way, and we're all learning to open up to our unique way of expressing these gifts and expressing who we are as these divine human beings. I think it's just gorgeous, honey. We're so excited. This is just like amazing. <laughs> like we connected with your, your little galactic family or part of your galactic family. It's really cute. And there's that poem, isn't there, by Marianne Williamson? That often gets wrongly attributed to Nelson Mandela, because I think he used it in one of his speeches, which is about saying, it's not who are you to shine your light and to, you know, to, to, to share your, your gifts out with the world. It's who are you not to, because by holding that, you're preventing other people from recognizing who they can be and what they can be. So I do think that even though it is a bit scary and a bit daunting, we've had it different things coming from the, the channeling stuff and the things that even we felt a little bit uncomfortable yeah. about going out there and doing but we just have to get over that discomfort right you know, that some people are going to think that we are weird <coughs> you know, some of the stuff that we're doing is a bit woo-woo because we know it's important and it matters some of our yeah. viewers have got in touch and and um and some of our um our respective clients as well and said that they really like the fact that we just talk about this stuff as though it's normal, that we've, we've kind of helped to make it comfortable for, for anyone to come out and just start talking about this stuff because right. it's not really limited to this really reality. And there's so much more evidence of that being shown to everyday people. I mean, Sally's caretaker at your building <laughs> t turns up with a picture of a Roman face in her pool filter the other day and goes, well, you'll know about this. Well, of course he did. <laughs> just a little bit. I'm just hanging out in front of my place with Lulu. Lulu's my dog, for those of you that don't know, doing sunbathing, which has to be done every day. <laughs> no sunglasses. Um, and yeah, the, the estate manager just comes up and said, oh, you're into all this weird stuff. Why is this face in the pool field? <laughs> <laughs> did you put it there? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but I, I will circulate it and of course it goes into the into the WhatsApp chat and it's like, who's this dude in the corner? You should have just <laughs> unflinchingly said to him, oh yeah, that's George. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind him. But yeah, <laughs> he saw me the next day and he was like, he said to me, so who was the guy in the court field? <laughs> Apparently he's Roman. Had <laughs> like a Roman bath yeah. in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, clear as day. And I, I also think it's, you, you both work in mm, spiritual fields and, you know, lines of work that are more aligned with these sorts of conversations. And I think it's great to have lots of people on the show, lots of people from all different walks of life. You know, I'm very businessy and, mm -hmm. and you could look at the cover and you could make a judgment that well, how is she on this show? It doesn't align. And I think it's, you know, it's good to show that these conversations and awakening, it comes in every shape, size, job description, career path, you know, people are waking up everywhere, all the time. And they don't have to be healers, or, you know, psychics or mediums or right. dealing with past life work. You, right. 
it's everywhere. Yeah. And it, it's empowering. It's all about uncovering what is the truth for you. So people ask all the time, like, why, why channel? Like channeling is a, a sort of a thing that's becoming bigger and bigger. Now lots more people are doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it sort of adds another element to that, that using of your psychic gifts. So, you know, everyone's going to channel, but channeling isn't always about bringing through a message from a being. You channel your higher self all the right. time. And channeling in that way is probably the most empowering way to use it. You're bringing through your divine mind into your human reality and aligning it so that you're always following your inner guidance. It's like you're in a compass. Um, and I think that, you know, this whole, this whole thing about channeling and tapping into your, your spiritual understanding your subconscious it expands your world so much so that you're aware of so much more i agree it gives you more information so that you can make decisions more easily based on you know when you know more then you're more able to make the better decisions right. so it's, it's all about empowerment in a way, I think. well and you know on the empowerment um train if you will I think uh, because I know a little bit about Sally's journey and my own journey, you know, Sally went on her tall journey to uncover that turns out she's not that tall. Um, and I think, for me, I think for me, because, you know, in the last year, I'm like, wow, I'm going to be 50. That sounds like a big number. That sounds like a big deal. And so I think for me over the last year, maybe a little longer than a year, I have started developing that. Um, you know, okay, here's an example. As a young woman, I would have never gone to the grocery store with no makeup. Now it's like, because I was afraid of what people thought, you know, now, you know, you're lucky if I'm not wearing yesterday's clothes when I go to the, or last week's clothes when I go to the grocery store. So I think um, developing a, a personal um, uh, affirmation of yourself without looking for that outside of yourself then for me, that's what's opened up the idea that I can be open to, okay, I saw three orbs in the sky instead of saying, oh, that was the International Space Station dummy. You know, I mean, instead of, you know, just explaining it away or being unwilling to talk about it because what people might think, um, you know, or just some of, the, some of the stories that you always hear anytime you think about this kind of a subject, you know, especially in New Mexico. You know, I mean, stories of abduction are pretty rampant. Um, you know, there were a couple of spacecrafts that we know about that landed here, you know, that wrecked here. What? So when you talk about that, people are like, oh, no. you know, so I think for me, I had to get to a place where I was comfortable with myself as a human before I could probably um, be willing to expand and be open that's what i think yeah i think um oh, could you pass me the red cushion please because my trousers on camera are very bright <laughs> <laughs> sorry to blind you all okay, it's a glowing <laughs> it's these legs they're like lightning bolts <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah let's not call them pants <laughs> <laughs> what people think. Ruin <laughs> <laughs> the viewing experience with my pants. <laughs> I'm not on the show, honey. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's brilliant. I mean, I think that's a really great point because awakening isn't just about awakening to like phenomena or, you know, paranormal stuff. We're awakening to ourselves, we're awakening to who we really are. And that's that's the most important bit that we're awakening to like the truth of, of what we are as, as this, are we individual, are we divine, are we, you know, and, and where we fit in that grand scheme of everything. So, right. Um, that's, that's. Yeah, I think mean, even where, like who we are in past lives and, mm -hmm. you know, different forms that we've maybe incarnated in and, just understanding that whole journey, it builds a picture of who I am today, um, you know, being that multi-dimensional right. being, not person, being. Yeah, being. Yeah, yeah. multifaceted. And I think that the information that's 
coming through from you know, whether you want to call it the other side or you know the, the, those other dimensions it does seem to be coming in thicker and faster in more ways in so many different ways that are just becoming normalized mm -hmm. I, I think yes there, there is a lot of eye rolling when you talk about some of this stuff but there are far more people that just go uh-huh you know, there's, there's a lot more people that are acknowledging now and, and recognizing the truth. But right? for, for so long, that idea that we are on our own here, that we are the only ones in this huge, vast, immense universe is ridiculous. Yeah, so anyway, I remember as a child thinking how stupid that notion was. Right. You stand and look at the night sky. And you know, these things you can see are billions of light years away. So and it's, if you don't see an end to it, it just keeps going. So the it's idea of arrogant to think. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That there's nothing else yeah. it just would, you know, I thought it was laughable even then. But now with the, the the awareness that we have, the ability that we have now to see more and understand more of what it is, science and spirituality, I think that the two worlds are starting to merge a little bit, mm -hmm. I think. The, the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle are coming together and it makes it so much easier to understand. And I love the string the theory, isn't it? String theory, absolutely. <laughs> but, and I love the fact that so much information has been hidden in plain sight. Mm -hmm. So even when you think back to TV shows like Star Trek mm -hmm. and you know, even Star Wars and you know, so much of our fiction, so much of our mythology and, and the stories even going back you know, when we were in the temple one of the temples in that's Abydos, isn't it where in the hieroglyphic carvings there is actually in in one of the sections there are carvings of a uh, an airplane what looks like a tank there is a helicopter and what looks like a spaceship and it's just sort of blended in with all of the other hieroglyphics of cats and hawks and you know the other right. Stop and look up. So they know. Yeah. They already know. And I'm pretty sure that the likes of uh, Gene Roddenberry that, that created Star Trek, you know, a, a little gadget that flipped open and you could see the face of the person that you're talking to as a communications device. If only we had that today. <laughs> you know? It's so fantastical. So <laughs> In my mind, I think, okay, he was either time traveling mm. or in his meditations, he was receiving downloads of, of events from the future of what was going to happen. He was in communication with beings from other dimensions and planets, or all of the above. I, I just think that there are souls out there that know and that have been, they've, they've just been dropping it in and saying, mm. look, this is real because if those bits have come to pass, you know, I know that it all, it, you know, it's all very entertainment and it's a bit chicken in the egg, too. Isn't it's it? chicken in the egg. Yeah. Did he manifest that? Yeah. Or did he know it was already going to happen? It's like, yeah. Well, well, was it a little, and probably a little bit of both? Because yeah. obviously, we know time is a construct that's only linear on the earth plane anyway. So in the spirit, it doesn't exist. What time zone are we in? <laughs> I mean, it's seriously. Oh my God, when we were trying to set up these interviews. Yeah, even just trying to figure that out. I mean, that's why I was finally like, time is a human construct. <laughs> As I'm Googling. You got it wrong. <laughs> you didn't you? We were like, it's 3 p.m. your time. No, it's 4 p.m. No, it's 9 a.m. No. Yeah. Well, and what I thought was funny was even the app that I entered it into, even that was wrong. So, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, the hieroglyphics, Lorraine, I, it, what I love about that is I feel like it ties into my idea of imposter syndrome. I don't think that they were looking at each other like, sure, you saw that. Because, you know, here's Joe writing on the wall, you know, on the way home today, I saw a cat, a spaceship. A, <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody was like, they, they didn't, in my opinion, when I think about it, I just don't think that they had the crazy mass influence downloads that we have today, right? So they were able to say, hey, look what Joe saw yesterday on the way home, you know, as they were looking at the wall. I, 
I think, uh, I think it's very interesting how they were just willing to say what they saw, you know, instead of us where it's like, okay, so yeah, never mind. You're not going to believe it anyway. Exactly. Exactly. So interesting. So and what's coming up next for you other than us coming to visit, obviously, so we can do a, yeah. Um, you know, great question. I mean, New Mexico has, as we've talked about before, just so many beautiful landscapes, so many spiritual people, so many people doing really cool stuff from their heart, you know, doing what they know that they should be doing. So um, I'll probably get out and do some filming of my own to submit for your approval. <laughs> So. <laughs> Me, yeah. our approval, you goose. Um, we wouldn't approve half of our episodes. No, <laughs> no. They probably need more heavily editing than we do allow. <laughs> um, but we could put a call out. So, if there's anyone in New Mexico watching the show, and you know that if you'd like to be on it, or if you have a topic that you'd like the show to cover in the area, please drop us your comments and, and join the community here at Wake Ones. We're international. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. So thank you for that. Because we want to see more of your beautiful face, honey. And I think everyone wants to see more of you. And you you are so great on camera and you're so inspiring when you just start. <laughs> that cool, sassy American thing, that Nicole Kidman looking thing. How do you do? <laughs> we need to <laughs> Oh, you guys are the greatest. This is uh, this is good. I'm so glad that we did this today. This is awesome. It's good to see you we need to do this and we miss you so much. You and too. I just think, you know, as as a collective, this is like for its foundation, isn't it? So it's yeah. Good. yeah. More updates from the show. And actually, I think me physically being apart from you says even more about the power of the four of us together, right? I mean, the fact that I'm physically not where you are, and it's not like you guys all live next door to each other. I mean, you know, you live in one of the largest cities in the world. So um, I, I think that just our, our physical apartness, in my mind, speaks even more highly of, of, the, of the connection. Meant to be girls. <laughs> Get rid of me. Get rid of us. We got you on WhatsApp, baby. Um, it also is so lovely. Like I just love this sisterhood, women coming together, women women collaborating, supporting each other. Um, there's so many other um, kind of projects popping up around the world at the moment that you know we interviewed Paula last week with Noi and her, her kind of women's collective or business collective um, and we're seeing so much more evidence of it and it's like this great um it's like girls network <laughs> not everywhere but it's yeah. you know and, Michelle's got Gomba. and you've got Gomba exactly yeah. you're telling you know, us about Gomba because we haven't I don't know if we said much about it last time we spoke to you yeah I don't know if we did either so um Gomba stands for girls only no boys allowed um, it's not a man-hater group. The whole uh, idea of the name of the group uh, was I had this image of a treehouse that a couple of little neighborhood girls had built, you know, and of course you don't let boys into your treehouse, you know. So I, it was, it was almost, it was two years ago this coming August. I, I just felt like I needed to make a closer connection to other women. Um, I travel for work and so I don't, I'm not frequently at the same place long enough to um, have those have those bonds, you know, have those community ties. So I started it uh, two years ago with probably 20 of my friends, and um, we're over 500 now. In fact, we we had a very interesting surge recently because the the group, as you know, is private, so it's not searchable. So if you're in the group, you can invite friends in. Um, what I think has been interesting is how many times I've received private messages that say, I love this group. I'm keeping it for myself. I'm not inviting, you know, my judgy friend or my sister because I feel like I need to or whatever. Um, and then it's also interesting. The other thing that happens to me is I get private messages 
So this group is private, right? My husband can't see what I wrote. My, my siblings can't see what I wrote. My parents can't. I'm like, nope. And then inevitably, after I assure them that it's private, you know, as private as Facebook can be, um, they will post some incredible soul cleansing post that half of the women in the group go, I know exactly what you mean. I went through the same thing or that happens to me as well. Um, so it's, uh, we've had, I, I put a call out um, recently and just posted, you know, hey, if you, if you just remember, if you want to invite people to the group, feel free. You know, if you have girlfriends that you want to put in the group, feel free. And we wound up with the 111 members in the matter of um, uh, three days. It was kind of crazy. So now we're up to over 500. So I think we're probably going to plan some, um, some birthday celebrations, you know, because we're everywhere. I mean, obviously we're in all parts of Europe, Australia, Mexico, all over the U.S. and Canada. So um, I agree with you. I think there is a global movement of women coming into their own power, but not taking power from men in the process, because that's not what it's all about. Um, so hopefully people will continue to participate in that. And I love it. I love it. And yeah, your interview with um, Paula, oh, she was amazing. You know, she's like, oh yeah, we have all these experts and we just ask that you, I mean, just like it was very matter of fact, you know, like everybody does this. So, and I'm, I'm looking forward to a time when everybody really does do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, we miss you. <laughs> oh, I know. What are we doing? afternoon let's go shopping <laughs> we need to plan another trip out there i think we need another road trip and i do too um, you're talking about the, the hot springs it seems to be our thing we always end up floating around the hot springs on the end yeah but we float around in hot springs after something <laughs> it's a when we've earned the hot spring yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so there's, a, there's enough here you can go without having to earn it <laughs> And let me be the one that passes out next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the cave, darling. We'll leave you in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we need a hot spring in the cave. I'll be nice. It's all going downhill now. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's so lovely to speak to you, honey. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing much more from Michelle. We'll have more updates like this with you as well, I think, going yeah. forward. Now that I know how to use Zoom technology, this is great. Yeah. yeah. It's good. We all have tools. <laughs> yeah. Do the filming days with us all the time, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All right. We're done. We're done. So thank you so much for talking to us today. Yep, absolutely. Happy to. Anytime, ladies. It's so weird because we're like filming it for our viewers, but we're having a, a chat with Michelle. So it's like, we'll continue this on WhatsApp. And we sort of wrap this up professionally, but also go, bye, honey, we miss you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> we will, we'll, we're going to stop recording now, but we just want to say to all our viewers, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. And uh, we hope to bring you more great chats, more great content. Any uh, suggestions? please um, comment below. Please uh, subscribe and join our community on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And Twitter. And, Twitter. <laughs> um, and yeah, we, we love hearing from you. We love um, that this is, this is growing and we just hope that it snowballs more and more. We hope to inspire and heal and send love out into the universe. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for you. watching. <laughs>